Good morning, church. This is Nick, and today is Thursday, which means it's time for our pastoring corner, uh, where we jump in as pastors and just try to have conversations either with each other, with other people, to help resource and equip uh, you at home during this time. And so today I'm going to be having a discussion with a good friend of mine named Mandy Frost. She is a life coach that attends our church, and we thought it'd be great to have a conversation uh, about communication at home and with families and how that can contribute to our overall health as a family and spiritually and just everything involved. And my hope is that uh, she's able to equip and resource you with practical tools and tips for having not just conversations with your families, but having great conversations with your family that leads to kids empowered to build, wanting to contribute towards uh, their homes, uh, being healthy places for discussion and growth in the future. So I hope you enjoy our conversation uh, that we have today. Awesome. Good morning. Great to see you. Uh, for those that might be watching here, this is my good friend, Mandy Frost. She has been attending the church uh, for a little while. Let her introduce herself to you. She's a dear friend, good sister in Christ, has three wonderful boys, an awesome husband, a godly woman, and uh, now with that giant introduction, uh, I'll let her say a few words about herself before we begin talking about uh, just being spiritually healthy uh, when it comes to communication and families during this time of, of sheltering in. So Mandy, you have an introduction or anything? Thanks. Thanks for the introduction and those kind words. Um, well, I think if you introduction with regarding what we're talking about, I was just wanting to focus on um, grace and peace during this time and how we can experience grace and peace. And um, so we can improve emotional and spiritual health, which ultimately helps us to um, deal with the stress and the conflict that we're going through within this, um, you know, social isolation. Yeah. And I know, um, I mean, we could, there's a thousand different topics we could talk about. Uh, we could go into time management. We could go into um, where our, our hope and peace comes from. We could be super theological. We could be very practical. Uh, but for today's, for today's purposes, uh, we're going to talk about communication specifically. Is that right? That's correct. Awesome. Uh, so I guess I'll, I'll start off by, by asking you, you know, how can we deal with stress and conflict during times of social distancing? Um, yeah. Yeah, and as you say, there's a lot of answers to that. So we're going to focus in one area. But I think by looking at our emotional and our spiritual health, you know, our spiritual health needs to come first because it affects all the areas of our lives and it affects our emotional health, you know, what we think, how we think and how we act. And so this, our starting point I wanted to come to today was talking about grace and peace. And specifically, grace and peace came to mind when, you know, when just reading the, you know, especially Paul's letters, he always starts with grace and peace to you from God, our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. And this is interesting because he doesn't say happiness and wealth, strength and power. It's, you know, why mm -hmm. specifically grace and peace? And so I wanted to bring that on the forefront today. And then it also reminded me of what Jesus said to us. Jesus wanted to leave our peace, leave his peace with us. In John 14, 27, he says, peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give you as the world gives. Mm -hmm. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. And so we want to have Jesus's perspective. And his perspective is leaving us with his grace and peace. And that is not about wealth, health, and happiness. And so I think that if we can have that starting point is what is his perspective, you know, for my life? What is my starting point? Yeah, no, that's, that's huge. As I'm listening to you, I'm like, oh, man, you're, you're going to trample on my Easter sermon, but that's good because you can never hear it. You can never hear it enough. But this concept of peace and ultimately where we find it from. Um, and so, you know, we talked about the fruits of the spirits and love, joy, peace, patience, all of that. Uh, none of that comes from the world, uh, but we're conditioned to try and find a lot of those things in the world like yes i have love here and joy here and peace here but in reality mm -hmm. those are all listed as fruit from the spirit so yeah i mean unshockingly we totally agree on on where to find that peace um so do you have uh like specific ways that that we can find great grace and peace in our lives and in our homes uh, tangible things or just even you know sort of theological things that you can share with us 
Yeah, so, um, you know, ultimately, finding the grace and peace, I believe we need to focus on our connections and our relationships. And so we need to be able to develop great communication and understand what that looks like so that we can have deeper connections and improve relationships. And so great communication comes from having great conversations and great conversations comes from having great questions. And so that's kind of in a nutshell of what we can do. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I know working as a youth pastor for many, many years, um, questions was sort of the, the secret to my success. I, I found that a person wanted, they always felt like we had a great conversation when they got to answer questions about themselves. I'm assuming you're kind of maybe going in that direction a little bit, or is there more to that? Yeah, and so, so practically what this looks like is how do we do this? How do we have, how do we develop great communication? And what are some, what does that look like? What are some practical tools? that families can use. And so this is kind of what I want to, where I want to go, because it's, it's all very well to have these conversations, but we need to ta and see what that looks like in a more tangible way. Sure. And so we, going back to um, great conversations, if we want to start, we need to have great conversations. And so ideas of how we can have that in our homes and with our families is, I would say number one is make sure that we're having meals together at the dinner, dinner table mm -hmm. without devices, no devices. And, and now is the time when, when families can really do this because they're not rushing around, they're not busy having to leave for work. These are so important. These are, you know, I mean, if you can have three meals a day, wonderful, but if you can at least try and have one meal at the dinner table together every day, and this is important. It's a time of enjoying one another's company, just having fun, laughter. It's not about bringing conflicts. It's not about talking about issues. You want to be able to eat in peace. There's your peace and grace coming back into your conversations. And so it's about enjoying one another's company. And so that would be the number one thing to start having great conversations. And the other thing I would do is find a specific time where you can actually have an intentional great conversation. So this is other than your meal time. So it could be something like, well, let's, let's have a, a family check-in connection time every day after dinner for 15 minutes. And so you get into this routine of coming together as a family, having like a check-in. I mean, you can find a, get your kids and teens to think of a goofy name. What, what should we call this like family meeting, like check-in connections or let them come up with something kind of just fun because you're having a conversation. And I just want to say like, what is a conversation? The important thing is a conversation is not a one way street. And often parents have, they don't really have conversations. They have lectures. They give their kids lectures, you know, it's Turn conversation into a bad on. word, right? It's like, it's like ranting on and giving advice and solving problems. Okay. So that's not a great conversation. Mm -hmm. And so let me explain exactly what this definition, what it looks like. It's not, there's no lecturing. There's no giving advice, no telling what to do. There's no ranting. It's purely getting curious, asking curious questions, really wanting to give your kids some space to think, some space to share how they're feeling. Because the idea is to hear their hearts. This is not coming into the conversation with your agenda. You wanna hear their hearts, you wanna get curious, you want to help them to feel heard. And this is a big thing that I get with a lot of my students, my coaching students, is they don't feel that their parents listen to them, they don't feel heard, and therefore, they don't want to share and they don't want to, tr they don't trust their parents. And so this is helping connections and making them feel validated, letting them realize that I do uh, care about what your opinions are. I am listening to your ideas. I want to hear your, your um, solutions to these, these problems. And right. so it gives them well, space. Well, I got a question. Am I allowed to, am I allowed sure. to poke in here? Okay. So sure. <laughs> you have three boys, right? How old are your boys now, by the way? 19, 21, and 23. Yeah, and I, yeah, and that happens fast, I understand, right? Um, I have two girls, one in junior high, one in fifth grade, and uh, I do know your boys are all exceptional young men, uh, just for anyone watching. I, that I want you to know that you're listening to someone who's done a good job raising them. Uh, but here's the thing, let me flesh this out. So we're sitting around a table, and we've carved out this time, 
um, whether it's at the meal table or or we'll say during great conversations and I'm just listening and one of them says something that I disagree with or says something that's gossipy, right? Like, let me tell you about my day. Well, I was, you know, this, that, and the other. And and I realized that's not a healthy thought or that was gossip or that was, you know, that, that trigger that is in the back of my mind where I'm like, that deserves a conversation. Uh, what's your advice? Do I put that on hold for another time and bring it up? Or what, what do I do in that moment? Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. I think it really just depends on where the conversation is going and who else is talking. And it's, it, it, it depends. You can definitely put that on hold. And then that could be a planned conversation that you could have one day as let's talk about how we talk about people or gossip and you could just kind of make that into a a different conversation, but you could, okay. I think the important thing is if you wanting to kind of deal with that straight away, very often what we'll do is we'll give our opinion. Oh, that wasn't very kind, you know, Mm. change it into a question rather so that they can think about what they said. Was that helpful? How would that benefit other people if if they would hear that about themselves and so turn it into a question and it it takes a lot of practice because we do want to jump in hey that was really unkind why did you say that Mm. um and so it's kind of takes a lot of intentionality you know you could say something like um if you had to really say that to that person how do you think they would respond or how do you think they would feel something like that so it's like verbal martial arts you just get better over time and with practice it takes a lot of practice. I mean, Phil and I, we, we practice this even with our young adults. We, we're coming together and we're saying, okay, we need to have a conversation. How are we going to go about this? What questions are we going to ask? We kind of, those are different intentional conversations where you have a goal, where you're trying to go and you want to teach them a lesson, but you're wanting them to come up with the answers by you asking the questions. Mm, so almost like question-based selling sort of technique. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, yeah. I appreciate that. And I hear you that sometimes there's probably something worth bringing up, but I'm guessing there's also, and you might get into it is um, it's important to also have planned conversations one-on-one with your uh, either family or kids or whatever. Just another thing I want to add. Sometimes if we want to deal with that straight away, it doesn't always benefit because when your kid has said that they automatically in that defensive mode, but when mm-hmm. you approach that at a later stage and you talk about it in a non, like you're not actually pointing fingers to specifically what they said the other day. And I think about um, talking in parables, was it Solomon? Sorry, remind me when they, when, oh, David, King Solomon. Was it King Solomon? No, it wasn't King Solomon. I need to came hear more of the David, story. Came to David and was talking in parables of Nathan. what would you do? Nathan. When Nathan came and he said, yes. yeah, and he said, hey, there was this little you lamb. And then he goes, you're the you lamb. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then you're not so, def- they don't get so defensive. So, you know, it depends on personalities and relationships. And That's a really good point because David ended up convicting himself and Nathan didn't even need to, to say anything. That's a good point. He used so. a story and a parable and whatever it was yeah. to help him convict himself. Yeah. Right. Okay, so I hear you on find a time to have great conversation and then what does it look like? What would you say is our next sort of step or your piece of advice? Okay, so understanding what the goal is of a great conversation is very important. The goal is not to um, have an agenda. The goal is to hear your children's hearts. The goal is to let them feel heard and validated and so that you are saying to them, I acknowledge your feelings. I acknowledge your ideas. I love to hear your opinions. And even if it's something you don't agree with, you know, just ask another question. What makes you reach that conclusion? You know, turn it into a question and then we're more open to have the discussion. And so we need to understand what these questions look like. So to have a great conversation, we need to understand what great questions are. So what I can do now is give you a couple of ideas of what great questions could be used in a conversation, a check-in, how you're doing kind of conversation. So would you like me to give you some examples of what that looks like? Yeah, absolutely. And before you do that, uh, will when we're done, will, will you be able to give me some sort of resource that I could link for people to see more material or should they be taking notes? Um, I didn't really ask you too much yeah, before. So. I, 
I think take notes definitely and then I can send a resource which will just give some other ideas I can give you I can send it to you on email and you can make that available on the website but yeah. I, I would say take note because this I mean there are a lot of questions and it's good to be able to write them down and then plan it that yeah, does for sure. definitely help well, then um, I would love to hear your questions so this is a check-in you want to see how everyone's doing this is your 15 minute whatever you've decided to do as a family so these are some possible questions you could ask you could say what is the most challenging part of your day hey i'm really interested what do, what were you struggling with today what, do, what was hard for you today you really just want to hear their hearts um another question could be what are you learning about yourself and this is a great question because you're helping them to develop a growth mindset as well. You're not just focusing on what they can do, their skills, how smart they are. That's a whole nother conversation. But you're asking them like to think about well, who are they being? Who do they want to be? Who, they, who are they aspiring to be? Like how are they growing? And that's always a great question to ask. Another question could be how can we communicate better as a family? So you you're also helping your kids think about, well, what is good communication skill? And in a sense, you're teaching them how to communicate. And if you've got younger kids, you'd obviously, these questions that I'm giving you, you would, you would say them a little differently. You'd use different vocabulary words. And obviously, depending on the ages, would make a big difference. Another question could be, what are our family values that we want to honor over this time of social distancing? That is, that is a wonderful, wonderful question because you can get into the whole, well, what are our values? And instead of you saying, well, you know, we value God, you know, you know, our faith in God, our relationships, you want to ask them because I think what could be also very beneficial is you could see, well, what are they going to come up with? What do they see in me? Like, how are my, how are my actions? Am I honoring our family values? And it'll, it'll be, it's a, it could be a great conversation to see how you're doing with with how are you honoring those values? Another question could be, what is working in your life? Hey, what's, what's going really well for you right now? Or what's not working in your life? What are you, you know, what are you struggling with? What's not going so well in your life? And yeah, sometimes if it's an older teen and you know, the answer might be, I don't know. I don't know. Like, what do you deal with? How do you deal with I don't know? Well, get curious about the I don't know. Ask another question about the I don't know. Well, how does it feel for you to not know? Like, how would it feel if you did know? And just get curious. Yeah. Um, how is this social distancing or these conflicts or these issues affecting us as a family? Okay, talk about those things. How is this affecting us? And how can we, what can we do better? How can we improve? How can we hold one another accountable? So kind of like checking conversations is you really checking in on how your kids are doing, checking in how you are responding in the situation, talking about what's important. Yeah, hearing you say that, it really seems to empower the kids to speak into really just the health of the family, because it's not, it's not you checking in on them, it's allowing them to give feedback on the family and speak into what they'd like to see or what creates a better environment for them to learn so that when it's time to have those hard conversations, uh, they're more apt to listening to you Definitely, because particularly when that you have given them space and you have allowed them to share their thoughts, they definitely trust you more. And then they, they start coming to you for advice. They, you know, oh, later on, they come and say, hey, mom, what do you think I should do here? And that is, that is such a blessing. That is just, you know, you know we, we love to give our advice and we do it too much. And we want our kids to grow up and give themselves their own advice. And when we give them the space, they start to trust us and then they come to us and ask us, you know, we hold back on the advice and the, and just ask the curious questions. It, it, it's really very, creates a lot of connections. Yeah, no, I, I can see that. I, I think, uh, you know, maybe half of these things I'm like, yeah, I got that nailed. And then there's some things I'm going, yeah, I'm going to need to pray for more patience. And so, um, but these are really good questions and, and, and tips. And so uh, do you have any sort of like, you know, parting shots or pieces of advice or, I don't know, vision that you'd like to share with people? A vision with regards to just generally? Yeah, how you'd like to see families or what brings uh, joy to your heart when you see uh, 
what health looks like um, in relationships? I really think that if, I mean, if I had learned a lot of these, when I call them coaching tools, because it's really knowing how to ask the right questions and to sit back. And I think that I would have done a lot of things differently. And so, so I really have a passion to, to show other families what these tools look like. And because having those connections, I think is really key. And a lot of the time, you know, if you can have good communication and good connections, um, I think that is just, I mean, for me, that, that is just amazing. If, if I can see families using these tools and getting results and drawing closer to their kids, um, I think that just really, that kind of makes my heart sing, I guess. That's good. Uh, and knowing your boys, again, I, I know that they, they all seem to love the Lord tremendously and uh, are doing well. And so, again, you and Phil have done a great job. And is it okay uh, if, if people from our church or, or wherever reach out to you as well with uh, just questions, if they happen to have those? Sure. Yeah, they can ask great. questions. Give me a ring. I'm happy to chat on the phone. Um, feel free to do that if they're struggling with some issues, for sure. Cool. All right, well, I will, um, I will make sure that I put uh, either email, I'll check with you, and then I'll get it uploaded. So anyone watching, I will put contact information to Mandy here. Uh, Mandy, thank you so much for your time. I, I really do appreciate it. Uh, we want to resource and equip our people to better serve Jesus, and especially in the context of their home. So thank you for, for doing this, not just for us, but uh, for, for lots of people. You've been doing it for a while and doing a great job. So thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Nick. I, I hope this was helpful. Thanks for inviting me. Yeah, thank you. Um, okay, well, you have a wonderful day. Thank you for your time. And uh, anyone that's watching, thanks for watching. Have a great day. Thanks, thanks Nick. Thank you.